Hello everyone. Continuing from part one, I'd like to introduce Ginza. Last time I introduced the townscape of Ginza, and this time I'd like to visit the famous Kabukiza Theater. Kabukiza is a building where Kabuki performances, traditional Japanese performing arts, are held. It seems surprising to find such a facility in Ginza with luxurious brand stores. I'd like to walk to Kikabukiza from Ginza Station. It's also directly connected to a station called Higashi Ginza Station, so it's very accessible. While walking, I'd like to give you a brief history of Kabuki. In the latter half of the 16th century, when Japan's wartime world was finally coming to an end, new performing arts were born one after another among the general population. Among them, Furu Odori dance, in which people dressed in various costumes danced in a circle, became very popular. In the Edo period, early 17th century, Kabuki Odori performed by Okuni, Amiko, Shrine Maiden of Izumo Taisha Shrine became especially popular in Kyoto. Kabuki Odori was a popular dance at that time that incorporated the costumes and gestures of Kabuki Mono, a group of eccentrically dressed people who did strange things. As Kabuki Odori became the trend, groups of female performers imitated it one after another. The dances performed by these women were called Onna Kabuki and became popular not only in Kyoto but also in Edo, Osaka and other parts of Japan. However, due to the fact that it was highly erotic, women's kabuki was banned by the government of the time on the grounds that it would disturb public morals if women performed on stage. At the same time, wakashu kabuki performed by boys also came to be in demand but was also banned because it was too sexual. After the ban, a new form of kabuki was sought and men, instead of boys, started to perform. That was the reason why kabuki is performed only by men on stage. This led to the de development of kabuki. The content of the performance developed from a debut of songs and dances to a theatrical performance with the plot consisting of multiple scenes and the skill of the performance was required to be of a higher level. The role of male actors called Onnagata, who appeared in the guise of women, was also further established as it had been since the day of, days of Wakashu Kabuki. Kabuki was the entertainment of that time, so it was performed in playhouse theaters all over Japan. It was the equivalent of what we now call a movie theater. However, the performance hours were very long, running all day long from early in the morning until around 5 p.m. The prices range from 2,000 to 33,000 yen, so even the common people of that time could not afford to go to see a performance. Kabuki is a traditional Japanese performing art and its plots and history are very deep. If you are interested, please check it out. So while I was talking about that, we arrived at the theater. It's within walking distance from Ginza. Here is the Kabukiza theater where you can watch Kabuki performances. The nearest station is Higashi Ginza Station. We are now near the Kabukiza Theater. Ukiyo-e pictures are on display. Near the main entrance, there are panels showing the details of today's performances. Information about the performance and homoma are posted here. Ticket sales information is also listed. The price prices start at 3,500 yen, so feel free to stop by. 
This kabukiza was built in the 19th century during the Meiji era. It has been renovated and rebuilt several times, but it's still magnificent. Kabuki Theater itself can be seen not only here, but in many other places. If you cannot go to Ginza but would like to see Kabuki, it might be a good idea to check to see if there are any performances in the city where you would be staying. The history of the Kabukiza is described here. It's written only in Japanese. The Kabukiza is also connected to Higashi Ginza Station by an underground passage, so you might want to use this way when the weather is bad. Well, I wanted to show you the, the inside of the theater. Unfortunately, video recording inside was not allowed. It. I was told that to taking pictures of the whole, whole place was not a problem, so please bear with only the pictures. Even if you don't attend, attend a kabuki performance, there is a souvenir shop in the basement, which is open to everyone, so please take a peek. There are also big lanterns in the basement, so I think it's worth seeing. There is also a floor guide in other languages, so if you are interested, please make a use of it. So, what did you think of the Kabukiza? Then you may come up with the question, which performance should I see? I think it's a good idea to see whatever is playing at the time you visit. There are many different kinds of Kabuki performances, and some of them are very famous. To be honest, there are many plays that are difficult for even modern Japanese people to understand unless they have some knowledge of the historical background of Japan. So I hope you enjoy the atmosphere of the performances. Now we are also doing something called Super Kabuki to fami familiar familiarize Jap uh, people in the modern world. We are also doing one piece from the manga series in Naushika of the Ballet of the Wind from the Ghibli movie. So even if you don't understand Japanese, there are performances that you can enjoy. The prices range from 3,500 yen to 17,000 yen depending on the class of seats. There are tickets available on the day of the show, but due to the pandemic, they may also uh, they may not be sold, so I think it's better to purchase tickets in advance. There is an English version of the ticket purchase site, site, so please check it out if you are interested. By the way, I explained about Kumadori, which is a kabuki stage makeup with a pattern of colors on the, actor, on the actor's face. The color of the kumadori can be used to identify the role of the actor. Let represent justice, courage, and goodness. Blue represents ruthless evil and it's often used to uh, use for uh, villains. Brown is often used for non-human characters such as demons and monsters. It's interesting to see its colors coded laws, even if you don't understand the words. Please take this into consideration when watching Kabuki. If you come to Japan, please try it. Next, I'd like to head to Tokyo Plaza, a shopping mall that houses a duty-free store. It has some duty-free items such as cosmetics, so I think it's convenient when shopping in Japan. Let's go! That is Tokyo Plaza. In Japan, Obi-Wan Kenobi has just started airing on Disney+, Plus, so you can see a big advertisement for the show. Star Wars movies is very popular in Japan and has many fans.
I just took the escalator up and I'm now on the third floor. The duty free store is on the 8th uh, and 9th floor. I'm surprised that the elevator was con contactless, so you don't have to touch the button to activate them. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. I went to the duty-free store and found that it was closed. Some of the stores were open, but because of the coronavirus, they were mostly closed. Here is the duty-free store that sells cosmetic and sundries, so please stop by when you come to Japan. Since I came all the day, all the way, I'll introduce something else to you. I like to introduce some plants and tools used in aquariums. They are very popular now as an easy way to add greenery to your room. It may be difficult to buy them in Japan and bring them back to your own country, but it would be nice to see and enjoy them. There is also an area where you can try to make an aquarium. Work tools are also for sale. So, I couldn't introduce much, but there are various stores, various variety of stores, from ones that are high-end to ones that are reasonably priced. And there is also a restaurant area on top, so please stop by. Lastly, I would like to introduce some toy stores in Ginza. If you have family or relatives with children, this might be a good, a good place to buy them souvenirs. Let's take a look. This is Ginza 6, located across from the Uniqlo store, which I introduced in part 1. I'll introduce the stores inside in the Blume section of the next film. Shiseido, which is a famous Japanese cosmetic brand, also has a magnificent building. This is a toy store called Hakuhinkan Toy Park, which mainly sells toys for little kids. It also sells Nintendo Switch software. It sells interesting goods like this as well. The toy section is from the basement to the fourth floor.
still cute stuffed animals made in Japan. Here, also dinosaur toys here. Here is also a baby educational toys section. So, how was my introduction of Ginza? Ginza is a charming town and there are many places that I couldn't introduce in part 1 and part 2. Please stop by this town when you visit Japan. In the next video, I'd like to introduce some delicious food in Ginza. This one is a must see, so please look forward to it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a high rating and subscribe to our channel. If you would like me to introduce any other places in Japan, I'll be happy to see your comments. See you in the next video. Goodbye!